We are live and I'm here with Julia Christians. I'm so happy to be with you. Hi, Julia. Hi, Lila. And Hello. everyone. Hi, everybody. Where are you right now? Uh, I'm in Germany in, in Hearts Mountains. Like, there's no big city around, so the next one is Hanover, but mm -hmm. nobody knows where I live, so I live in the forest. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Is it pretty? It is, yes. We have a lot of uh, tourists coming here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. So everybody, I'm going, type in where you're from, where you are, viewers, those are, that are watching. Oh, you see that? Good. Um, Julia was born in 1984, which, by the way, was the year I graduated from my graduate degree. Isn't that so? We're, what an age difference. And as a diploma in communications design, she works as a freelance illustrator since 2018. She's represented by my agency. She's worked mostly in the children's book industry for clients like Nosy Crow, Oxford University Press, and Portia count among her clients. She lives in the deep, dark forest of the Hartz Mountains in Germany with her husband, two kids, and the probing question, if three dogs are enough dogs? She thinks the answer is no. That's fabulous. Welcome to all our viewers today from all over the world. We're so happy for you to be here. Make sure you put your questions in the question panel, the Q&A panel, which you'll see at the bottom of your screen, and that's the best place where we'll see them. And we will take some questions. We also have a giveaway at the end of the show today. Do you want to hold up the book, Julia, of what... Um, what we're going to give away, the book we're going to give away. This is a book and she fully illustrated the cover and the interior. But how, how can I flip it? <laughs> like that. It's hard here. <laughs> oh, that's fat. No, that's great. It's wonderful. So good. I will tell you all one of the reasons why Julia is so busy and she's going to tell us about projects she's working on. One of the reasons is because her characters have so much energy and aliveness and movement. And we're going to look at her work shortly. Oh, you're what? What well, did I freeze? Oh. Yeah, you're oh, back. Good, good. Well, you know, we are halfway around the world from each other or a quarter of the way around maybe. Um, so that's one of the reasons, one of the things that really drew me to your work, Julia, and seeing you in class in the children's book class and how you just, you're, you obviously, I always say people buy your joy, you obviously put a lot of joy into your work. You are the kind of person who finds joy in many things. And so do you have to work at that or does that come naturally to you? to be positive well, and joyful. I know no well, one is happy all the time. No. <laughs> no, well, I'm a positive person, but when it comes to characters, I don't have to work a lot for it. Like, mm -hmm. um, I like it's just my passion, making them move and um, making them, them alive. But it's also like a lot of practice. Um, like you have to, to study how emotions work or body posture. So how does the body move when someone is happy or, or, or sad and mm -hmm. things like that. So you have to learn how to move people, but yeah, but these, um, well, it's just fun for me to create those uh, mm -hmm. characters. It's not hard work. <laughs> so Susan McCabe, agent at my agency says, Julia's work has such warmth and humor in it. It's so true. If you could do humor, and it, I'm not even talking about like comedic, you know, comic book or something, but if your work has a bit of humor, it's so appealing to art directors and editors, so appealing. What are you working on right now, Julia? What projects are you working on? Tell us. Uh, I know you can't give away details, but our Susan will kill me. <laughs> but um, no, but tell us a little bit. Um, I just started a picture book for an um, English publisher okay. and yeah it's about a funny boy and a beer and I can't say much more but it will be very cute and the project is lovely because the text um, gives so much opportunity to um, create a story um, like the text doesn't tell the whole story I have to invent a lot of the story there so mm -hmm. 
Uh, this will be a very fun project and I'm very excited about it. And that's like a 32 page picture book kind of deal. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And you're working on two other projects right now, aren't you? Yeah, I have a book series over here in Germany um, with a big publisher. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, well, I'm doing, I think, the fourth book of this series. And I'm working on the cover there right now. Yeah. So fantastic. So when you have all these projects, we're going to, I'm going to ask you in a bit how you became an illustrator because everybody's always interested in the origin story. But how, when you have, three or so huge projects at once, but very multifaceted. How do you manage your time? Do you like to use post-its on a calendar? Do you, do you say, you, because everybody wants, you can't just work in sequence first this book, then the next, then the next. You need to work on the three simultaneously. How do you, what advice do you have? How do you do that? Um, I have like a table and um, the first row there are the months and um, then I use a text marker and mark the, the project length like mm -hmm. when it one project takes from January to March there's a long line and I wrote on that line which project that is and then um, I add the other projects below and so I can see where there um, are breaks or where I have room to squish something in. Yeah that's so good you know what, I would love, maybe you could take like a photo of that and Kim, we could put that in a newsletter if she could, you know, is she, if you're comfortable sharing it, but. I'm not be, sure because, because Susan will kill us if we do. That's true. Um, we could like white out key information. <laughs> I could just illustrate how I do it. <laughs> yes. I know, I always like to pretend like I'm the like, like the disruptive child and everyone else is like, keeping me under control. <laughs> Susan has a question. Does your love of dogs inform your illustration? Good question. Oh, well, it does. <laughs> Is that another, you know, I always love to get dog projects, but no, actually, well, it's, it's, yeah. Will you show us the books? I know you have a little stack of some of your many this? books that you've done. Uh, this is, I think this is the first one I finished ever. My first finished book, I think. Really? And, uh, yeah. And, um, and the cover got um, printed out really big at Bologna. It was like three really just it was so cool. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, it was. It was very exciting for the first book. Um, well, it's, I, I mostly do those chapter books for mm -hmm. first readers. So there are not so many illustrations in. Um, but Erica says she remembers seeing that online. It was huge. Oh, look at that. Yeah. It's, how do you like working in black and white? Um, I actually like it because, um, yeah, well, I miss not like doing color palettes and stuff, but it's also nice to work with contrasts. Um, mm -hmm. just looking if I did it here in this book. Um, like I, I like to make like mostly black pages and stuff like that. I have it in other books. Um, because um, you can concentrate on the contrasts and you don't lose yourself into uh, colors so much. Like, like in this one, I like to make it real dark. I have black and white and just add some whites. So you use contrast, you use different grays and all sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the textures come comes out nice too. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to, to uh, flip through the books <laughs> and I hope them up. Yeah, um, that's true. But I can't find the one I'm looking for right now. I, there's some. Oh, that's maybe. But I think um, working in black and white is interesting because you have such a. Um, you you work different than in color because black is such a strong color, and I think when you have color, you avoid using so much black often because you have more possibilities of contrast. Like you can um, work with color contrast instead of just light and dark. Will you show some more of your fabulous books from that pile? Oh, I can. Well, this is a series I'm doing in Germany too. Um, um, this will be three books. I just finished the third one. This is the first. 
and the second got moved because of Corona into next spring, I think. Will you so, show us the care? Look, can we see that cover? Look, so look at the energy and the expressions and poses. By the way, my child, illustrating children's book class starts Monday. Um, that's how I <laughs> met Julia. Did you like the class? It's really it started my career. Really, I just uh, tried to I just tried to be a kid book illustrator and started to work on my portfolio. And then I took your class. And um, with the pieces I did there, I got my first book. Yeah, so, that's fabulous. Did... Fabulous. So, thank you. That's a wonderful testimonial. I did not pay her to say that. Um, she just said it. But you see that her pieces have expression and energy and animate an animated quality of movement. That's not a requirement. Is particularly strong with Julia, but it is something that's important to show in some way. Okay. Oh, that's good, Rocio. I'm glad you're excited for class. Andrea, oh, show us some more books and then we have a few oh, questions okay. that popped up. Okay. I've, uh, this is another series I'm doing also in Germany. Um, um, yeah, it's about, it's for right, younger readers. Um, and will you hold, hold the book so we can see the cover with the beautiful Oh, they're just, well, first of all, the colors are beautiful, but look at that character, that bat. Fledermouse yeah. is bad, I know that. <laughs> I don't know a yeah. lot of German, but. You have, you have a teacher at home, I know that. I do, yeah. right, my husband's fluent in German. <laughs> wow, oh, it's just so charming. <laughs> it's otherworldly, too. Your work is otherworldly. Let's um, look at some questions and then look at some more books. Andrea asks, how do you manage your working time with two little children? Uh, well, there's kindergarten. <laughs> so yeah, they, they both go to kindergarten in mm -hmm. the um, before lunch time. What mm -hmm. is it called? English, sorry. In the <laughs> morning? Thank you. Oh my God. In the morning, yes. Um, so well, your English is fantastic. You... <laughs> this is the stupid word not to know. That's fine. Well, um, they go to kindergarten from nine to um, mm -hmm. two. Yeah. Um, so I have some time to work. That's fine. And before, when my, my daughter, she just turns two in August when she was smaller, I just worked when she was taking a nap or in the evenings. Yeah. Um, she, it was hard. I'm happy she's in kindergarten now. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Kay Wolfs, Wolfersberger. Kay, it's good to see you here. She says, hi, when an art director approaches you about a book project, do they have the number of spreads and layout worked out already or are you able to give input? Well, um, about the, the spreads, like what I put on there? No, mostly they just um, send the text over and say, like when you do a picture book, and then they say, like, here's the text and um, sometimes they divide the text on for the pages, like on page five and six, there are this part of the text and, and so on. And with this chapter books, where the, there's more text, um, I just get an amount of illustrations I should do, and I mostly can choose myself which scenes I could illustrate. So Fantastic. So you read the manuscript, and you scribble yeah. and make notes and so forth. Yeah, I do like I can show you like I do. I have these um these sketchbooks, and then I have like um there's like chapter two, and then I while I read, I do these little scribbles here. Um, while you're reading, you make the little yeah. drawings. Yeah, so I don't have to go back and read it again and read it again because they're like 300 pages or something. Like that. <laughs> um, and then I just like um take notes and and uh, put down the little scenes I want to illustrate and sometimes more than I have to and then I choose the best ones I want to do. So smart and it looks like you have a lot of fun doing that. Um, Robert Martin says when is the class on how to illustrate children's books? It starts Monday and go over to my other site makeartthatsells.com and you will see all about illustrating children's book course and how to do that. Um, Liz Scotta asks, are European and or German children's 
book illustrations different than in other countries? If so, how? Hmm. Actually, there's not much difference. Um, I feel that international um, publishers give you a bit more freedom or are a bit more willing to um, take, not take risks, but um, well, they don't give so much um, uh, control, direction. Yeah, the briefings are not so tight. I feel that the German briefings are a bit more stiff and I am wiggle out there a bit to <laughs> and but, when you're working for an international huge publisher they a, a very seasoned art director knows this is the artist we want we want this artist to do her thing we want what she does and we trust her and we're giving her freedom and that's a seasoned art director yeah yeah sometimes it's hard when the briefing is to try to um do, do good good work because um, you have to work so differently from how you mm -hmm. used to. But yeah, that's, but it's, well, it's not so bad as it sounds. So it's just right. it's not <laughs> terrible. Right, right. Oh, yeah. um, Andrea writes, how do you organize your time over the day? Oh, I have this uh, planner here. Um, and this is the weekdays. Uh -huh. And then Put in when I'm finished with the week, it looks like this, and then, <laughs> and then I on Mondays, um, I or just, just started here for Friday next week. Um, I put on um, on Mondays what I want to do the week over. So uh, when I come to my desk, I just have to sit down and see, okay, it's Tuesday, what's today's task, and I, I'm not um, procrastinating and uh, thinking about what can I do today, I'm just uh, working down my list and then. I don't lose a lot of time. Yeah, and it's so good to just focus on today. The yeah. Work of today, not the 10 million other pieces and parts for all week or month, because you'll just get stuck and frozen. But just no, like, down in little pieces. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, Helen Simmons asks, do you have any advice on how to get spotted by a publisher? Um, oh, yes, it's also from your class. I'm not sure if I should spoil it. <laughs> um, you know, just send your work often and maybe on unusual ways. Like I did a post postal sending, send postcards and little gifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, like, oh, I have, I have one here. Um, this one. Yes. It was really, this was, this brought me a lot of jobs, this little thing. I did it right after your uh, kid book class. Class, uh, yeah. I went there, and it's a little, like a mini book, and like a um, business card too. Here, here's my phone number and stuff, and then I sent it yeah. around. Um, and how uh, many of those did you get printed up, and how many did you send? Do you, do you remember um, at all? I think I sent around 50. In Germany, I was represented by you at that time. And then I sent it around like 20, no, 30 or 50, I can't remember. But um, yeah, it worked really good. Like mm -hmm. um, a few weeks later, I got my first book deal out, out of that. So, and I tried it a half a year before that to get something. It was really amazing. So you tried a half a year before and to get something, got nothing. Then yeah. did amazing work, sent out some, and got work right away. Yeah. Moral of story, it's all about the work. It's 100% true. Her work is, like, I knew when I saw your work in class, I can get you jobs. Your work <laughs> is going to get jobs. And she's busy solidly. Um, make sure you put your question over in the Q&A panel, viewers, please. Um, Pia, pop yours over there. That way we keep track. Erica Root. Hi, Erica. Asks, how do you organize your workspace when working on multiple projects simultaneously? Uh, can you see this little white box? <laughs> you can pull out the drawers and there is all my, there are like paper stacks and stuff of all my projects. Like I, I don't know, I did have five drawers and um, yeah. So I can organize five projects there. That's so great. The where it's got like the little holes, the slots, right? Yeah. Fantastic. And tell us and surprise everybody about your work process. What 
what it, what art supply do you art supply do you use? Well, this one, this little guy, mm -hmm. I got it from you, by the way, from oh, the good. Oh, good. From <laughs> yeah, the I, so pencil. I, I mostly um, start sketching on paper because um, you're not so um, you're not so stiff. Your your mind is right. open and more free on paper. And then I, when I have nice sketches, um, I scan them or take photos of them and move them over to Photoshop. And then I mostly only do Photoshop. I'm a little idiot with analog or with traditional media. <laughs> it's really not my thing. I don't have patience for that. Wow. So for traditional media. Yeah. And no. then what do you use? Um, yeah, well, Photoshop and, um, then I use um, uh, brushes from Carlty Webster. They're included right now in the in the Adobe Cloud. In and Photoshop. Yes. Yeah. You can okay. just download them for free now. They're like oh, oh. you can have two hundred brushes, and they're amazing. And I mostly use like things like pencil or any major pencil is the one I use the most. I think for outlines and or like a, a b h b pencils and all these pencil things i use for outlines and then and shadowing and stuff and sometimes i add a little watercolor mm. uh, photo br photoshop brushes for the textures and that's it mostly and procreate on an ipad yeah you do procreate on an ipad do you do photoshop on your ipad um, yeah, well, um, Adobe has now um, this app called Fresco, which okay. is like, I think similar to Procreate. I haven't tried it um, out yet pretty much, only one time, and I missed a um, feature, so I didn't try it anymore, but I think it has this feature now. Um, on, on iPad, I love uh, Procreate, and mostly when I do personal work, because I work on the sofa watching Netflix then, and Feeling on that. <laughs> the dream life, the dream life. Yeah, yeah on the yeah. sofa watching Netflix with your pro. But so when, so you use like the um, the the pencil, yeah. the yeah. like digital pencil on your iPad. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, okay. and on when I do when I work on my computer, I have this uh, Cintiq. It's somewhere here. Oh, um, Cintiq. I, uh, yeah. Okay. When you work on your computer. When you do yeah. Photoshop, you use the Cintiq yes. with the digital pencil. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. You know, when I first started a thousand years ago and, and Macs were just invented, it was about 1984 uh, that when you were born, I got my first Mac. The screen was about this big and black and white and your mouse plug. Do you even, do you guys even know what a mouse is? Anyway, yeah. a plug in the mouse. And you had to draw with the mouse like this, like moving the thing and watch it on the screen. It was delayed. It was so slow to. Um, I started working digitally when I was 14. I don't know which year that was, but it was before 2000. And there, I had no graphic tablet and I had to draw with a mouse too. So I can do mm -hmm. that. I, okay. I can do that. <laughs> Yeah, it, you couldn't get a lot of detail. Um, Nita says, where do you get your inspiration? Um, well, mostly, I think, from everyday life. It could be movies or my kids or um, sometimes, like, when I have to I have pressure to have inspiration, I use just use Pinterest, like, and looking for vintage photos or costumes or... Um, Sometimes it's also good to look like in photography for um, um, compositions and stuff. Like um, it's like you shouldn't copy other artists, but it's, right. I think it's okay to copy other um, other art. Like when I'm and I'm an illustrator, I can look for inspiration in photography or in, in fashion design or something and add it to my work. And right, so, right, right, because I, you're taking that visual that photograph and you're interpreting it in your style and it looks nothing like the original yeah. source yeah, yeah yeah it's not like copying a photo and but like oh there's um um how is the light going there on the photo and i could use that on a, in my scene which looks different or yeah something like yeah, that yeah yeah oh i see 
Oh, that's good for scenes. Um, I also, I always wonder what the question, what that means, inspiration. Like, do you even need inspiration anymore? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because if you're not inspired, you do all the all the time the same things every time. I think you need to evolve, and um, the progress is the way or the the goal. <laughs> like, there's no end game. You have to always uh, come become better and better. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you don't uh, work on your uh, abilities, it gets boring. I mm -hmm. think. And it's not very satisfying to do all the, to do the same things over and over. So you need inspiration and, and um, progress too. So inspiration might be a new um, digital brush, right? Or a new color palette. Or... Yeah, color is good, yes. Okay, that's cool. Riley says, good reminder about constantly progressing. It's so, so true. Jennifer Potter, my artist, says there's no end. Happy birthday, through. Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Erica Root says, that's my way of drawing too. Netflix, iPad, pets. I'm telling you, it is the dreamiest life to be an illustrator. I miss it. Not enough to go back right now, but, um, but it was wonderful. It's just get those manuscripts or the brief and and just like curl up to music, 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 or NPR and make pictures. It's really doing me a lot of pressure, um, but a lot of satisfaction. It's a dream yeah, it career. It really it is. is. You have to be really good, which you are. Michelle says, your style is very solid. And soon we're gonna look at her artwork. So stay tuned for that. And then we have a giveaway of one of her books. Um, Michelle says, your style is very solid, but do you still experiment on your style or technique? Yeah, yeah, I do. But I'm um, right now I'm a bit afraid to change it a lot because clients book me because of my style, so I have to change slightly. But yeah. I have like times when I'm, I'm sick of the way I do eyes and faces, and then I try something new, and then the change is too big, but at the end um, it uh, crawls into my style and just a tiny bit and so it changes over time. Yes, and that's so good. That's so good to keep your work fresh. I'm going to pop up the poll, so be sure you f fill in the poll. We'd love to just learn a little bit about you. Um, Robert Martin says, I'm an art director and mailed post and mailed postcards always grab my attention from illustrators especially if they're good enough to keep. It's not old school. It makes the relationship more personal. Thank you, Martin, Robert Martin. What, where are you an art director for? We'd love to hear. And thank you for being here. Um, yeah, you know, there's one thing about sending a newsletter, an email newsletter, but a postcard someone needs to at least look at, even if they're going to toss it, an art director will look at it. And usually they'll They'll pin it on the wall if it's very good. Um, but I do think it's great. Okay. Pia asks, how long do you normally get to make the illustrations for a picture book? Oh, Greg Vineyard says, I used to hang up all the cool art postcards I got at Mattel. Greg, I didn't know you were at Mattel. Greg takes lots of my courses. I love having you in there. So, um, Julia, somebody says, how long do you get to illustrate a picture book? Oh, there's um, it's like six months or something. Depends a bit on the project, but more mm -hmm. or less months. Yeah, that's great. Um, okay, let's see. I have this window here on my Zoom. Can I close it or should I, should I keep it open? I I'm not sure. I'd hate to have you close something and then you could probably move it out of the way though. Is it in your way? I can move it down. Hi. You can see okay. It I know I'm afraid to close anything and <laughs> wreck everything. Yes. Less, so um, earlier, was it earlier this week? I did a Facebook Live and I closed a window and I lost my my um, my guest and I dropped an F-bomb. <laughs> I did. 
Okay, whatever. I thought I wasn't on the air anymore. Processing. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, did you see that? Oh, I mouthed it. Thank you, Kay. I think I just like muttered it. Yeah. Oh, it's, is it the survey? Somebody says it might be the survey that you see. You can move that survey down the poll. Okay, thank you so much, many of you, for answering the poll. We do appreciate it. Oh, I'm already forgiven. It was kind of cute. Well, it was reality. Okay, let's see. I'm, um, so Robert Martin is the art director for Cycle World Magazine and Motorcyclist Magazine, the two last motorcycle magazines in the U.S. Prince Not Dead Yet. Wonderful. I agree. I love magazines. I do subscribe to some as I like holding them and turning the page. I just love a good magazine. That's why I became an illustrator way back. Kate Concrife says, hi, Julia. I love your work. I've loved your work since we were in illustrating children's books together. I remember your amazing squirrel pieces. I do too. I'm interested in your work process. How long does it take you from sketch to finished pieces and what are your steps? That's oh, well, question. the squirrel took ages. This one, this one was so, so hard. I, it took days, but <laughs> I'm faster now. So, um, mm, depends a bit on the character. Sometimes so, a character pops up, it pops up in a, in a half an hour and sometimes I have to work for several days on it but until I'm, I'm happy with it. And then I'm, like I start working on it and when I, I notice the flow isn't there, I just do something else and try it again next day and look for inspiration, maybe how to change things. That's fantastic. Um, there are lots of questions here. Thank you. We'll try to get back to them, but will you hold up a few more of your books and then we're going to look at your PDF. Uh, okay. Your well, uh, which one do we have? Um, do we have this one? I think I don't have so many books because I just started. Um, this was the first uh, book I um, got, um, my first job. Um, it's also okay. in German. It's uh, also German. It's the um, Grandpa, Grandpa and the Night of the Wolves. The mm -hmm. um, first reader. And it's, yeah, it's like they did. Um, I always did the chapter beginnings and they always wanted a full page um, for the chapter beginnings. So, um, yeah, it's always like this full, full page here. But I really, I like the cover a lot because yeah. the, Oh, wow, the hold that a sec. That's gorgeous. Look the at grandpa. the drama. So the, the grandpa gra is a wolf. Yeah, he turns into a wolf at night. Wow. That's um, amazing. Yeah. Wow. I wow, like wow, that wow. I was able to use a lot, a big typography cover. I always like to, when there's a lot of text, I, all the text are very big and yeah. Mm. Like, right. and then uh, here's a little tiny one <laughs> this it's also a german, a german book it's um there's a popular series um they're called pixie book they they cost one euro like one dollar and Aww. there's in the supermarkets there's a big bowl and there are a lot of lots of these books in um yeah and every german kid knows these so it, it was like a dream oh i can to do one of these because they're pretty popular here. We have like, I, I think my kids have like 30 of these. <laughs> they're like That's... just like, like tiny, tiny picture books. And... So beautiful. Yeah. Do you notice how each of her, every composition is different too? There's such variety. She doesn't do the same thing over and over. Um, okay, let us look, any, any other books or should I go to your PDF? Oh, here's I another. This one. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is a first reader too. I do a lot of first reader, um, and this is uh, this was interesting because they didn't want to have black and white um, illustrations, but um, I would was able to choose uh, two colors to um, do the illustrations in, and yeah, That's so it's so great. And yeah. you you were able to choose the color. Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. I choose, and then I had um, I choose uh, green and and um, yellow because it's about guinea pigs is that the word and they yeah. they eat a lot of these um dandelions is that huh. the name of the flowers here these ones yeah yeah and so i needed those colors so it was an easy choice <laughs> but it was interesting to do the illustrations like in this um 
in not in black and white or color, but in mm -hmm. many different ones. Yeah. Okay. Let me pop up your PDF. Everybody, you're going to love this gorgeous PDF. Um, here we have her. I mean, you know, I love the man on the left. I went nuts when I saw you do that. Um, he's just like a very specific guy. All your people are very specific. They're not sort of the same thing. Um, like the woman on the right, her hair's up in a bun. She has a specific jacket with a patch on it and a yellow backpack. You know, everything, the dog is a specific kind of uh, dog. The guy in the background has a plaid jacket and a pink scarf. You know, the attention to detail is so beautiful and your lettering is great here. Um, Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Let's look at the next one. Um, I, I mean, her people. This is why you're so busy and get so much work. Your people, your colors, the energy. I'm, I'm still staring at this and seeing new things I've never seen before. It's just so fantastic. Did you have fun doing this? Yeah, um, and for this one, I actually had a lot of inspiration for the clothes. Then mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I go to Pinterest and search for trendy kid clothing, and then, or or adult clothes too. So I get a variety and um, like skirts and patterns and stuff. So I don't have to make up everything because mm -hmm. like making up characters and telling the story is often hard enough. So I take bits and bites here and there and add it to my work. So. Um, I saw this outfit here or this pattern there, and then I put it together to a new, new piece. It's fantastic. It's beautiful. Okay, next piece. Happy to meet you. Oh, that's nice. You made this for the thing for our little, our webinar today, too. I oh, no. It. My, this was my uh, blurb book for the retreat. Um, this oh. was the the front page, the first uh, picture was the front page and this was on the back. And I had my, um, my, my Vita there and a photo under the happy to meet you, like the words it takes. So fantastic. I mean, you know, diversity, you have on the right two men with the baby, you have different skin colors and ethnicities done equally beautifully. Um, again, specificity of in the clothes, that's so great and it just looks like you had a ball doing this so much fun i love that lettering by the way i don't really i don't i haven't really seen a lot of that i love it the dog is fantastic you can tell you're a dog lover just so beautiful your colors are incredible let's go to the next one here's that book and yeah. you can see on the the bottom right nice photo by the way um did you take that photo? You started? Yeah, from grandma's house. <laughs> really? Yeah. Grandma's lace? Yes. So great. So this is, tell us about this piece. Is it an interior illustration? Yeah, it's one of the chapter beginnings. And yeah, it's probably, um, it's pretty much the end of the story where um, the boy, he's the main character, um, and the wolf pack, Finds, they have to save one of the wolves and then they uh, manage to do it and then they sleep in the forest and I think the boy awakes in his bed. You make it, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I'm done. <laughs> you make it look um, easy to do uh, expressions on the, that child. It's, it's a very contented, gorgeous look. Really nice. I love this piece. Tell us about this. Yeah, we had that already. I'm, this was the one I did after your class for um, sending it around to publishers. And it's, until now, I think it's from 2017. Mm -hmm. And still, still clients send it like when they hire me. They always send this one. I'm like, oh, we want, we love this character. So <laughs> it's such I a fun. Too. I love it too. It was another reason why I wanted to take you on. It was so great. Okay, next page. Here you go. There's the cover and the top is, tell us about this. Um, 
this book actually I have to make more um advertise it more because of the text because it's such a lovely story mm. um it's you think it's about a boy um who loses his dog because the dog's old and he's going to die but it, in the end it's a story about divorce and the families um families moving um uh being apart and and parents arguing and stuff and this boy is very lonely and it's such a sad sad kid book but it's so good like it's funny too the author is hilarious mm -hmm. and uh, the story is too but um it's a very complex story for a kid book i really love it it's still one of my favorite stories so mm -hmm. if you get one you should get this one it's really good <laughs> everyone go out and buy that Oh, these are beautiful. Tell us about these. Yeah, that's another series I'm doing for a big German publisher. Um, the first one is released um, already. And the second one, the blue one uh, at the bottom, um, should have come out in fall this year, but it moved to spring because of Corona. And then I think the third book will come out to two. And then the series is closed for now but we, if it runs good there will be more so fantastic <laughs> yeah and the girl is can be um transparent yeah, uh, transparent. When, yeah. is she a ghost no no she is uh, when she blushes she yeah. gets transparent it's her superpower transparent. wow the one <laughs> on the upper left that's amazing that's a cool yeah. story yeah it's, it's very funny too <laughs> oh it is yeah well, you would be hired for humor. Okay, tell yeah. us about this. What a dramatic. Isn't oh. it? Yeah. <laughs> it's from the inside of those books. Um, yeah. And um, the kids, they get into like um, um, in an adventure hunting for uh, bad, bad guys and or getting hunted by bad guys too. And um the girl is trying to um, train her superpowers and stuff. Yeah, and they got, uh, go, they're going to be friends. And yeah, at the top, the top image is like where the bad boys uh, wants to catch them. Mm -hmm. So I use the Western post there, you know, from old Western. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> so, oh. Great. <laughs> well, that was your inspiration. Yeah. Yeah. That's brilliant because those old westerns were very dramatic and the cinematography was incredible. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah, and it's always important to use like um different angles because if you always do the same angles it's a bit boring. So I have to put the camera a bit lower for once or higher to make it more um surprising to the viewer. Absolutely, yeah. At the top one, we're very low down looking up and the bottom one, we're high up looking down. So great. Okay. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. We're way up high. Tell us about this. This is incredible. Your people are just so good. Wow. That teacher is so great. <laughs> you kind of yeah, tight sweater around your belly. Her shirt untucked on the right, hanging down. Yeah. The um, yep. Yeah, that's also from the book and where the, the main character is dreaming herself away in class. So, mm. the, yeah, the background turns into the space and she's, I think it's actually written in the text that, that she's in her dream bubble or something like that. Mm. Yeah. And so I made this room up. <laughs> that would seem hard to illustrate it when you first got the manuscript to figure out how are you going to illustrate that and then this is such an incredible solution and again your use of black and white like you don't even miss the color you don't even notice you're so busy looking at the imagery it's not easy to do but you're very comfortable using full white and full black and all different grays okay wow talk about energy tell us what's this for i love this um this was for a pitch that um but the project didn't um happen at the end mm. and yeah they wanted um characters with different diversities mm -hmm. and um 
uh, yeah, they should be like they should have looked like fun and modern and yeah, mm -hmm. it was foreign foreign advertising. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's so great thing. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking about the word. Yeah, but at the end the project didn't happen. So, but um, I still like the characters, and I put a lot of work in there to make them like to use modern patterns and colors and to make them really colorful because normally I use a lot of browns and light pinks and stuff. And I love these colors. I love this palette, Julia. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. The thing when you try something new, it always adds something to your style. So I like the outcome too. I'd never used this orange red before, but it fits quite nice to it. <laughs> Um, the other thing too is w w your attitude is so great so you were pushed to use brighter colors and instead of saying well I don't do that which of course would have ended the job possibility but also ends your growth and excitement and energy and by having different colors uh, by you're open to suggestions. It's not always easy and sometimes the suggestions aren't good and don't fit one's style. I get that, but but you do have a positive attitude. Okay. Talk about bright colors. Tell us about yeah. these. This was quite hard for me because it was very bright, but in the end I really like how um like because they in, in print they use this um fluorescent pink and um I think the bottom one will be gold with the text. Um Ooh. it's really fun to see how the illustrations come out with these popping colors yeah i love and these are very good so if anyone has children these are very funny for like kids around five uh, the character's hilarious she's she is really uh she's destroying everything um and um a very she's like a tomboy and very fun character mm -hmm. which did pretty good to what people i like to draw like she's hopping around all the time making a mess and having fun it's really cool that's so great. Um, I love how the blue one, she's holding the bunny. That's very, that's really pretty great. These are by Nosy Crow. They, they do such great stuff. Okay, tell us about this page. Yeah, this is um, our two illustrations from the first book um, of Mabel. Um, like in the, the first one, um, in the text is written like she's um, uh, playing in the jungle and uh, um, having lians, is that the name? Like where Tarzan swings on? Um, a pl these uh, plants, these, these long, a you know, I don't the, know. How, you know, oh, you know, vines, you, people are saying vines. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Susie. And, yeah, and she's she in the text she pretends that her uh, toys are making her uh, change the kitchen into a jungle and pretending to be Tarzan and she's making a real mess and always pretending it was not her idea but the one of her uh, stuffed toys and it's very cute and at the bottom um, she wants to play uh, with a special toy from her friend and she hates being dressed up like a princess but she plays it with her friend to um to make her let her play with the toy she wants to play with she doesn't have at home so she uh, dresses up it is a bit unhappy but she's like oh well okay let's do this princess thing and after that we can move on to um the real cool stuff maybe <laughs> so great that's great yeah. again all the details and you barely even miss the color. Tell us about this. Um, this is a, a book I did, I think I finished it in the beginning of the year and it sadly got canceled because of Corona, but <laughs> I like the, um, the cover and the illustration I did so far. So, um, it's a very cute uh, character. It's about a really crazy grandma. Mm -hmm. and, She's eating sweets all day, and I think they're hunt going for um, hunting bad boys too. Um, and the the boy is very like a bit shy and smart, and and the grandma is um, very loud, and she wears um, golden shoes and is very um, broad. And it's a nice character because she's not so cliche. 
Ah, so, that's good. And yeah. you're illustrator in a way that's not cliched, like the yellow cowboy boots. And people are saying they love the boots <laughs> in there. Wow, mm -hmm. so great. Okay, oh, this is magnificent. Such a different tone and feeling than your others. Tell us about this. Um, yeah, this was for um, a sample illustration too, but I couldn't do the project because of my schedule at the end. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, um, they wanted like a very dark mood and it, I think it was in Seattle, the setting. So, and they wanted rain and it should be dark and a bit, um, yeah. And, and so this was done to show what you would do, uh, a paid a paid piece. Yeah. It, and then yeah. um, they did take you, but you had to say no, right? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. They, I think they wrote they would have loved to take me, but um, they wanted to make the project earlier than I could afford oh, them. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's amazing to me on the upper left, that orange um, signage is glowing. Like you get, you capture that illumination of the light of those, you know, it's not neon, but the lighting of that n-g-o-d-i it's just amazing i was don't, very excited about that too <laughs> don't, <laughs> viewers, don't you all agree that how do you do that in art that's amazing it's not a photo no but it's pretty easy actually when you do it <laughs> i wouldn't <laughs> like it's really easy and maybe i can do um a tutorial or something oh, that would be nice but I had really fun with this piece because I haven't tried the lightning and stuff before um, a lot. And um, also the rain. I think the rain works pretty good too for my first, it's pretty much my first rain. And so, yeah. And I had a lot with this piece, like learning new things, how to make it. That's why maybe it looks so different from the rest because I was practicing. <laughs> Terry says the light in this is stunning. And Greg says, the way your central character stands out is brilliant. It's so true. So true. Yeah, all the lighting on here. And, you know, to do rain, how do you do rain without obscuring your imagery, without like making it a mess? And she did these long lines, but they're not everywhere. It's just so, so well controlled. Um, everyone wants to see a tutorial, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> I take notes. I, I can maybe do one. <laughs> okay, we've got one more piece. Tell us about this really powerful piece. Mm, I think this comes out in a few months, maybe in August. Um, it's from the same author um, of What's That in Dark Years. It's for um, Oxford University Press. Um, I did just did the cover here. And yeah, it was a, uh, the brief was very, uh, uh, stiff already not stiff but they they wanted the soup like the campbell soup from uh, and they wanted the big lettering fitting to the other book i did for them and uh, this scene on it and yeah um yeah and it got and really like placative i would say but i don't know the word in english like it's very it's like popping oh, i think yeah. it's very big and, and small what's happening with these two men Actually, I have not a real clue because I just did the cover. <laughs> um, I think the boy always, uh, this is a homeless man, and I think the boy always brings him soup. Uh. Starts um, like, um, uh, yeah, like a movement that everyone shares their food. But I don't have, I haven't read the whole story. Because What's I did the inside illustrations, just yeah. the cover. <laughs> I know, I know. I, there are times I got book manuscripts and I would just read a little bit, but you got the idea after like a very short time about the character. Um, what I love is how the smoke coming out of the cup could just be like, it could have just been a circle or a blob, but it's this incredibly beautiful decorative motif that makes the, the book even, the cover even more interesting. It's very, really, really beautiful. Um, okay, we have time for a few more questions. So we'll thank you for these pictures. I'm going to stop the share, go back to us as humans on the screen. 
Um, Abby Jacobs. Hi, Abby. Writes, hi, Julia. Do you have any tips on getting energy and movement into your characters? Do you start with just your sketches? Thanks. Mm, I think it's important to um, make the body like fluid, like um, not like when the shoulders are like this, don't make the hip, in the, don't let the hips show in the same direction, but like switch the angles. Mm -hmm. uh, or the spine, like having a flow in the spine is important. And um, drawing a lot of poses is um, elementary, I think. Like doing small sketches or live drawing too, like sitting in a cafe and drawing people eating ice cream or stuff like that. So you get a feeling for how people move and sit and walk. And yeah, I think that's very important too. Mm, that's really great advice. Um, Esther Moles, hi Esther, says, do you illustrate from your head, from your imagination, or do you use reference materials like photos? Um, when I do characters, um, I mostly draw from head because I have like the system, how to make a character, like I have a head, and then I have like a triangle for the body where I add the hands and the, and the, the arms and the legs. And I know how to move these, but um, when I learn how to move things, I had to look for references. And sometimes I have still have to look for it. For example, when I um, want, I have to draw a lot of characters running and I have, I can like draw three or four, no, maybe only three poses for people running from my head. And if I want more variety, I have to look for references. So um, I can do a lot from my head, but if I want, special things or more variety, I have to look mm -hmm. it up. That makes a lot of sense. And that's true, you know, and, and it's great that you keep um, learning new poses and energy. Um, Jennifer Potter says, such lovely work. You always make me want to do more black and white. I know, and it's not easy. She makes it look easy, but black and white can be, it's hard to make it incredible and interesting. Um, Let's you see. Can do it. <laughs> oh, Robert Martin says Julia is a great talent and guest. Her use of color is perfect. That's nice. Terry Epstein, do you create all of the lettering on your covers? Uh, mostly. Well, I know. I think it's 50 50. Sometimes they want um, fonts and sometimes they ask me to do the lettering. So it's. Would depends you on would you say because you can do lettering, it gets you more work? Um, they often ask, yes, for, mm -hmm. to, for me to do the, the lettering. Because I think it's um, pretty on trend right now to have hand lettering on because everything is so digital. Um, so they like this handmade look, which a font can't do. So, and I think you can work better with hand lettering like in this one. Um, it's like easy. It's not so easy to do this with um, a font because um, the way the the letters squish into it together is it's it's hard to do it with um, with a computer computer font. Like you can play like um, squish the letters in into each. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Like so. Squish. No, you're right. It is squishing. Have you noticed my background keeps like getting lighter and darker by itself, and nothing is changing. Is my, hmm. is my room haunted today or what is going on? Look, I just did it again. Wow. And I think I'm being pretty still. Mm, maybe. Oh, there it goes. Is it when you move up your eyebrows, maybe? <laughs> no. <laughs> but it wasn't been good. <laughs> wow. Okay. Esther Moles asks, how many projects do you work on at the same time? uh may like it's always three up to five maybe but the projects are like sometimes the publisher needs a cover in march and then i do the final illustrations or the roughs in i don't know june or something and in between i have time for other projects so they stack up and you have to have a bit um like an overview mm -hmm. <laughs> But, and I always take notes when I finish a project, how long I need it for that to finish because so I can um, uh, 
can relate or can I, I know if I can take on more and so I can look at my table and and, my, and see um, okay I have three projects now in this time but I only need two weeks for this or five weeks for this one or two months for this and then I can um, I exactly know how long it takes yeah that's so good and that's also a way that you know when Susan and Kim call you with the job your agents here you know I, that you're too busy or not like we always want to say yes to every job because usually they're incredibly exciting it's money it's fun it's a, an exciting concept but you need to be able to look graphically and say I'm book solid but here's where I'm available otherwise how do you know if, if it's just in your head oh I have these deadlines so it's really good that you do that and you you never seem to get flustered or overwhelmed and you're not out of control with your time you're very organized and why not you should be because you work so hard for this dream career you don't want to be miserable so everybody work on your um, time management system you know come up with a way i have in mats a or b i have my time management system i did which still works really great for illustrators for clumping out with post-its and deadlines, but um, come up with a way that you can manage your time because it's critical in this biz. Some projects are a couple weeks, some are several months, and there's all different millions of little pieces and parts. Okay, Brenda Harris says, Julia, love hearing your thought process. Since Matt's ICB7, which is illustrating children's books that is starting soon, do you have any advice for staying focused and staying true to your style? Good question. Mm, mm -hmm. Boy. I remember when I wanted to start being a kid book illustrator, I had to change my style because um, I did like comics before more. Well, mm -hmm. I, I finished a comic, but I drew in that style for me personally. And um, then I had to decide like, uh, when I did um, ICB with a with a squirrel, I was like, I need to decide now how to draw eyes and bodies and hats, and then I fixed it for me first first time. Like I do it like that for now to fill my portfolio, and then um, it felt natural more and more. And now I do, do it always the same way, more or less. Like mm -hmm. there's pro progress, yes, but. Um, before that, I was drawing um, a lot of different uh, ways, like how I drew humans. They always looked like a bit different. Sometimes they looked like very adult and edgy and sometimes very cute and um, they wouldn't have fit together very good. And then, yeah, well, for ICB, I decided on a way how to draw uh, more or less. And then now I'm working on that way. How to, but So you made a decision. Yes. Which style to go forward with interesting yeah wow and um did you see and and obviously you're happy with that decision <laughs> how did you make that decision what do you uh, remember what went into that i think it it was mostly some um i choose uh, a way of drawing which was easy for me and uh, so it comes naturally and i don't have to uh, push myself too much because I have to, had to learn so much um, other things like posings and telling stories and stuff like that. I always, before I started with um, this dream of making kid book illustrations, I always did like single pieces and not telling a lot of stories. And um, yeah, so I choose the style I could easily do. Mm, and it was, yeah, so and it was important for me to make like characters uh, easy to move. Like, so it, I don't have a very realistic style because I can't draw realistic so good. So I have more of this, like, as I told you, like the head is a circle and the body is a triangle. And then I put, just put the legs and the arms on. And <laughs> this, but this, there you this go, is that <laughs> easy people. That's it, super easy. Yeah, but it's very easy um, to move for me, those figures. Yeah, and so um, they're not so complex, but uh, they work for me. You make it sound easy, but of course, if everybody could do this, um, but it's I not that easy. Kim writes, Julia is always booked solid. It's totally true, and you can see why. Um, Brenda Harris says, that's really helpful because I feel a similar thing happening to me. 
I have a decision to make. I draw realistic, but I need to be able to be more expressive, lively, and flexible. And don't forget that um, you don't, if you pick one style to really get good at, you don't have to never go back to the other styles. You can work on them at a later date or maybe integrate them or blend. So, uh, but it is really good to just discipline yourself to get really good at one thing and market that. Okay, let's see. Oh, we are ready for our giveaway. Um, this has been so fabulous. You wanna show them? Uh, Magnificent Mabel, the book she illustrated. And it's a wonderful, wonderful story. You'll enjoy it. First, I want to thank everybody for being here. It's been fantastic to have everybody. I learned so much about you, Julia, today. That was wonderful. And so many important and valuable tips. Those of you who came on later, I recommend you listen from the beginning because she gave a ton of valuable tidbits. Okay, so here's how we do the giveaway. Oh, before I do that, I want to tell you next Thursday, next Thursday, Thursday, 1230 Eastern time, we're doing another Zoom and webinar, and we will be revealing the next artist we're going to take on, and we will be interviewing that person. Notice I didn't say he or she, I said that person. We will be revealing, so please stay tuned for that. Also be sure you sign up if you like, if it's of interest to you. My Illustrating Children's book, it starts Monday. I will be doing a Facebook Live free and for the public on the Make Art That Sells Facebook page. So join Zoe, my co-teacher, who's an art director and published author at that time. We'll be going over um, the trend chooser which you can probably download on the site of Make Art That Sells. And I'll be, we'll be looking at lots of children's books. I photographed lots of children's books for us to look at. It'll be really, really wonderful. And yes, I am buying more and more children's books. Um, you can see this um, blue, blue cart over, it's backwards. See that blue cart? That's full of children's books, like a library cart. Okay, so how do we do the giveaway? What I do is I will say a category and you can guess as often as you want and as many times. Um, the guesses uh, will come very, very fast and quickly. Kim will, um, Kim, say hi, Kim. Hi, I'm here. Kim's in the background, our <laughs> producing, she's also an agent. Um, and she will, the first correct answer she spots will win the book, but, um, it's really, really hard to see who's the first. So you may have guessed it before the person Kim spots, but um, that's just showbiz. You get what you get and you don't get upset. And, and so that's how it is. And please put your comments in the, com your guesses in the comments, not in the Q&A. In the chat. In the chat, yes. Put them in the chat, yes, not the Q&A. Okay, is everybody ready? The category is, Animal, animal, animal. Oh, Whoa. oh yeah. Okay, I saw one already. Stop everybody. Yeah. Stop. Oh um, my god. Oh my god. So many. How do they type so fast? I know. Uh, Brenda Harris got giraffe. Giraffe. Thank Yay. you. Yay. So Brenda, you can email me at kim at lillarogers dot and we'll organize your giveaway. Um, I also just wanted to say the, uh, the webinar next week is at a different time. It's not going to be at 1230. It's at a different special time of 7 p.m. Eastern. So stay tuned for details on that. Maybe because the artist is from a very far away region. Mm. <laughs> perhaps. perhaps mm. not. Maybe I'm busy, busy all day. Who knows? Maybe I want to find it out before next week <laughs> or next next webinar. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, everybody. This was fantastic. Thank you, Kim, for your absolutely right. Seven o'clock, correct? Next Thursday. I'm yeah, so yeah, afraid to talk right now. Like I'm so afraid I'm going to say the name. I'm, I'm like paranoid. I can't even speak. But <laughs> thank you, everyone. We are so happy that you joined us. 
Thank you, Julia, so much. It was really wonderful to hear all your inspiring tips. I'm sure so many of you, the viewers, are were inspired. Give us a hint now. <laughs> you want to guess? Everybody guess really quick and comment in the chat. You go ahead you get and guess. Another book. <laughs> What's that? And you get another book now. Yeah, you get another book now. That was wonderful. Guess who you think we're taking on next? Yes. <laughs> me. <laughs> Somebody wrote me. That's funny. Wow. This is fun to see. <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. Well, thank you, everybody. It's been a real pleasure. We will see you again soon. And I hope you'll join me Monday for my Facebook Live with Zoe Tucker, my co-teacher for Illustrating Children's Books on the Make Art That Sells Facebook page. It's free for everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Great to see everybody. Thank you. It was nice to see you again and to talk to all of you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. <laughs>